Alright, I get lots of questions about my uh, piano because it's really weird. It is an acoustic piano, but it's also a digital piano. And that doesn't make any sense at all, especially when I like go to play it. And then I press a button. And then it acts like it's a digital piano. So there's a way to turn off the strings is what I say. That's not really what's happening. But I want to show you what's happening and show you how I get the digital signal out of my acoustic piano. First, we got to break the whole thing down. So let's open it up. Now, before you go tearing your own piano apart, I would recommend having a piano tuner or a technician come over and just watching them take your piano apart. That would help out a whole lot so you don't uh, break something. But this top part here that is the music stand can slide back and forth. And it, if you pull it toward yourself, um, then you can see there's a little rail that it slides on there and you can actually pull it all the way off if you pull it towards yourself because the little slot in the side there uh, will just keep on moving forward. So put the music stand down, pull it out, and you can see that little slot in there. That's where that bar was and carefully put it off to the side. This part right here is called the fall board and there's a little peg right in there where uh, it, it'll just like lift right out. It's not, uh, you don't have to unscrew anything. You can just pretty much pull it right out like that, carefully putting that off to the side, making sure it's not gonna fall over when you set it down. And this is what it looks like inside, having just taken off those two pieces. In fact, you can just take off the fall board without taking off the, uh, the music stand part of it. And uh, just take a look at your piano and see how the, the hammers go up and hit the different strings. On lots of the keys, there are multiple strings per note. It's kind of fun to see how that stuff all gets put together and how it works. Then underneath here, there is that this little screw. It's actually a big screw. If you unscrew that, then that allows the little chunk of wood right there to kind of pop right out. You're gonna need to have taken that one and the one on the other side both out in order to access other parts of the piano. And then there's this front little piece right here that goes all the way across. You want to gently lift that out. Carefully put it aside. And now this is almost all the way stripped down and this is what it looks like underneath each of the keys. Little felt piece underneath each of the keys. And at this point, we really haven't uh, done anything too terribly dangerous with the piano. And that part right there is the part that we're gonna talk about that makes the um, acoustic piano potentially digital. But uh, I'll show you how all that works. Those little tabs right here can get lifted up and then the, the wires disconnect and stuff, which I'm gonna have to do in order to actually pull all the keys out. But first notice down on that box down below, there is um, a digital signal being sent to it, as, as I've shown you before. Each time I press one of the keys, and so if I take that part out right there, now everything's pretty much detached and I should be able to slowly, carefully, very carefully, watching out that the hammers don't get caught here as I'm pulling it out. Slide the whole thing out. It's really heavy. It's gonna to wanna to fall down. Everything's extremely breakable. Again, don't do this on your own until you've at least watched a professional do it and maybe have them show you how to, uh, to pull all the stuff out. Then right here, hey, don't use power tools on screws on your piano, okay? Um, but I do need to take that, that thing off. First, I wanna show you just from the side that's what's going on with every single one of the 88 keys. We have other uh, videos and, and instructional blog posts and stuff on what each of those parts is. But I just thought you'd want to see the whole thing pulled out. That Those hammers would actually go all the way forward like that, except that they get stopped by the strings and pushed back down. There's a lot going on in there. And I'm being careful not to press out on the keys too hard because if I do those hammers will just all fling forward and maybe snap themselves off.
and that's the screw that I need to take out right there so I can take that whole piece of wood off. Got some screws in the middle also. And there's a little bit of red felt under there. I want to be very careful with that. It's a very uh, flexible, breakable piece of wood there. And now we're finally able to lift one of the keys up. And you can see underneath my keys is something extremely weird. Now, if you've never taken a piano apart before, you won't know that this is weird. But trust me, I've gotten my... <laughs> Uh, basically a microchip underneath each one of these. That's uh, little laser lights right there that um, shine up onto the keys so that it can register the key, each key as it's being pressed down, how quickly it's being pressed down, and which one is being pressed down. Every one of the 88 keys needs its own individual laser light pointing at it. So that's what all of those lined up all the way down there are for. Each one of them is dedicated to a single key to know if it is uh, being pressed down or not. And if you look underneath that key that's being lifted up, there's actually a piece of reflective tape. So we had to take all the keys off and put a piece of reflective tape underneath each of the keys like that so that the lasers have something to bounce off of and they can tell how quickly the key is being pressed down so that it knows how strong of a signal to send to um, all the, the other digital instruments that are coming out of it. And that's, of course, where on the other side is where you can see that uh, ribbon comes out and connects to the digital part and registers all 88 signals, all 88 keys. Now we'll put that back. Of course, always use your fingers first, boys and girls. Don't use the screwdriver first and definitely don't use the power tools to put your screws back in. Testing out everything as it goes. And that's what makes my acoustic piano digital. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So we haven't talked about how to turn off the strings yet. Underneath, if you were a hammer, that's what you'd be looking at. Those are called dampers. And those are the things that dampen each of the strings to make sure that uh, there's no sound coming out when you're not playing. If you press the sustain pedal, that's the one all the way to the right, then all of those dampers lift up, which is why when you press that pedal all the way to the right, any string that you hit with the hammers will keep on ringing until you lift up on the pedal because all of those dampers are coming off. So that's the sustain pedal on pretty much every piano that is all, all the way to the right. And that's what it looks like it's doing underneath each one of those pins going to a damper, allowing those strings to ring out. Now over here, we've got finally the important part. This is the little lever that switches the strings off. Now, uh, you'll see better how this works in just a second when I put all the action back in, but that's the lever that I'm flipping when I'm uh, turning the strings off or when I'm going digital only and not acoustic. Now, you notice I've got this bar here. That's not a normal bar. That's not found in most pianos. That thing right there is what's turning on and off the strings or disallowing the hammers to get to the strings is actually what's happening. From the top, it looks like this. So when I flip it back and forth, it's just doing this little motion. Again, that bar is not in most grand pianos, most acoustic pianos. We had to put that in afterwards. So that's how, what's happening there with that lever. That's what it looks like if you were just looking straight in, but of course you wouldn't be able to see it because of all the action in there. very carefully watching out that I don't push the hammers up as I'm pressing them in. Careful. Careful. <laughs> Be gentle. Go slow. Don't push anything in too, too hard or too far. Let me show you here. You want to make sure that uh, if you, when you're printing it back in, 
that the action lines up with that kind of that border between the, the paint and the unpainted wood there. It should be pretty much all the way to the front, not over or right on that line. And then on most uh, grand pianos, the uh, pedal all the way to the left is going to shift all the keys over. You might have tried that on your piano. On some, on some uh, upright pianos, not grand pianos, but acoustic upright pianos, it also does that, where it just kind of shifts everything over just a little bit. It's moving the whole entire action. And that whole entire thing that we've, we pulled out, it's all moving over just a little bit. And it ends up giving the, um, the notes that you play kind of a warmer, gentler sound. Um, it's actually shifting where the pads are hitting the strings, uh, where the, the hammers are hitting the strings, so that it's shifted over and is not on the compressed part of the felt that has been hitting the strings over and over and over and over each time you play the note, but instead it's just slightly shifted over onto a less compressed part of the felt. That's what gives it the warmer sound. And that thing right there, that's what's doing the shifting. So when I press the pedal, that right there is grabbing the whole thing and pushing it towards the right. You can see that spring on the right. So when I put the action back in, very carefully and slowly, making sure everything is lined up testing everything out all along the way, just going nice and slow. There's nothing good that's gonna come from going too quickly with this process. And you can see right there, there's that bar that we were talking about before. And then when I shift that lever, it moves it so that those keys can't get up to, the, the hammers can't get up to the strings anymore. It looks like it, it's really, really close, but it just barely prevents it. And then when I shift, it off, then the keys can actually, the hammers can actually go up and hit the strings, making that acoustic sound. So even uh, whether it's hitting the strings or not, it's still sending a digital signal out, and I can just decide whether to have the digital signal turned up, the volume turned up on uh, the uh, device that's coming out of there, or to just use the acoustic piano only. Putting everything back. testing it all out, going nice and slow. That little pin right there, that's going to fit into the slot. You wanna make sure that when you put this back, that both of those little parts that are sticking out fit nicely in there. Going slow, putting everything back right where it belongs. If I've done everything right, then my piano still works in the end. That's pretty much how it's all put together. That's how this thing picks up on the sounds. And I still get my audio from the acoustic piano or no sound from the strings, turning the strings off, which actually has nothing to do with the strings, but you know that at this point. We didn't go into the middle pedal. I know if you're interested, we can do that, but it's different on different types of pianos. So um, that's not like a universal, Thing. So that wish that should be its own video if you are interested in that then definitely let me know um, Otherwise, I think that's that answers most of the questions about the digital acoustic piano. Good luck. Have fun